times we come joining the shepherds who are stunned by wonder. On this most silent night, we come our hopes and dreams joining those of Mary and Joseph. On this night of carols and candlelight, we come our glad songs joining with the choirs of angels over us. God of grace, by your tender mercy, the dawn from on high breaks upon us. Your Son, giving light to all sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death. Your child, guiding our feet into the way of peace. Your Son, Jesus, a baby, Christ the Lord. Together, we picture that first night in Bethlehem, the lamp light, the small cries, the baby cradled by his parents outside the high dark night. May the voices of angels so fill our hearts this evening that we go from here singing their song of praise to you. Gloria.
up and good evening, good evening. Good evening. to our family here in Raleigh and across the nation and across the world for those joining us online and in Kampala, our sister church in Africa. Thank you for joining us this evening for our midnight service and the coming of Christmas and the birth of our Lord Christ. As we go to our God in prayer, let us remember those that uh, have lost family members over this past year. And remember that even if it's recent or many years past, the loss of a loved one leaves a space in this time of the year. We lift up our sister Caroline, our brother Stephen, our brother Willie Evans, and our brother Edgar, our sisters Kathy and Bobby Graham Ward, and the Weaver family, and their recent losses, and for all other family members chosen or by blood who have lost family members this year. We pray for those who are in hospital due to illness or injury. We pray for healing touch. And we remember our sister Lejeune as she travels. And if you have additional prayer requests that you would like to select or send into the pastors, you can do so by sending those requests to 919-726-0727. Will you go with me to our God in prayer? Our Heavenly Creator, loving parent, guiding companion, we give you thanks for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us, especially now at this time of year, to be here to celebrate the birth of your son. We give you thanks for being present with us in our lives each and every day, and for the blessings that you show us in the world around us. We ask that you would forgive us that we sometimes fall short of your expectations that we do not live up to the full potential that you have given each and every one of us and our gifts that you will touch us and guide us and lead us in your way we ask that you would reach out on this night and all nights to come to our brothers and sisters who live without walls, that they would find shelter and peace and safety. And for those with concerns of nutrition, transportation, that those issues would be addressed in your time, that no person should be hungry. And we ask that you would continually send your angels and your saints to guide us, not only this night, but every night coming. That we may fulfill in all that we do and all that we say the message of love that your son brought to this world. So as we go forward with our service this evening, be with our friends around the world and throughout our nation who are joining us online and for those here. Pray these in our silent meditations in your son's name.
scripture lesson this evening comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, from the New Revised Standard Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, in the beginning, with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, of, or of human will, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of, of a parent's only child, full of grace and truth. Ahem. <clears throat>
Good evening. Happy Christmas. Happy yeah. Christmas. <laughs> we had some tough lyrics to sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had to brush it. We had to pull the hymnals out and go to practice and something. <laughs> Robbie, you got to get on us. <laughs> we hear this reading that, that Fred shared with us just a few moments ago, uh, this John text uh, 1, 1 through 14. And uh, this is certainly a, a bit of a different uh, version of the Christmas story that we like to tell each year. We, we go through this Christmas story every year. And uh, I, I like John's text, and I like uh, how, how John gets right to the point. When we stop and we look at where we're at uh, in, in this season, when we look at where we're at here at Christmas time, I'll be honest with you, as I found myself preparing for uh, Christmas services, I didn't feel like preparing for Christmas services. It didn't feel like Christmas to me. Busyness, uh, life happening, things going on, it, it just didn't feel the same. Something was missing. And, and so I find myself trying to figure out what do I do? What, what's the missing element here? Where, uh, what, what's going on? Carlton used to say that uh, whenever you, you have some kind of feeling like that or what, something don't seem quite right, or you're reading the scripture, whatever it is, he, what's up with that? <laughs> what's that all about? <laughs> and I find myself in that place. And I think about this chaotic world that we find ourselves in. And I think about uh, you know, what we're going through as a people. And I think about families that are going through various things in this time of, of life and uh, I've sat with the Weaver family this week as they lost uh, daily at age 26 unexpectedly Tuesday morning. And sitting and in, in, in hearing a mother's pain of losing her baby boy. Right here, this was to be the Christmas that she was going to get to spend with her two sons. His birthday coming up in just a week. I find myself talking to folks who are faced with various challenges, thinking that this may be the last Christmas that they get to spend with their loved ones. Folks that, that don't know where they're going to spend Christmas because they don't have anywhere to go or anyone to be with. I think about what we're doing every Friday down at the Lieutenant Governor's office here in North Carolina and the folks that are meeting down the street at the governor's mansion. I think about the, the, the chaos that we find ourselves in the midst of. And I, I look to the story of Jesus, to this Christmas story, into a world of violence, political uh, corruption, poverty, disease, refugees, and religion gone wrong. Into that world came the Christ child, the hope of the world into that world. When we think about where we're at today, that could easily be where we're sitting today. But if we look to when Jesus was born, they were facing all of those same issues. Yes, Jesus came right in the midst of chaos. And his birth, he was here in the midst of chaos. I would submit for us that Jesus comes to us again in the midst of chaos here today. Many of us are challenged with doing Christmas differently yet again. We've spent, this will be the second Christmas now in the midst of a global pandemic. We have families that are meeting around the table and an empty chair represents someone who won't be with them this year. We find ourselves in the midst of chaos. But even in the midst of those challenges, even in the midst of everything that we have going on in our lives, John reminds us of the heart of the Christmas message. That's what I like about this particular text. John doesn't get bogged down in details. The manger, the, the, the inn, whether it was a house, whether it was a, a Motel 6, doesn't get bogged down in the Magi and whether they came two months or three months or, or three years after the birth of Jesus. He doesn't get into those minute details, not saying that they're not important, but John digs in and gets right to the heart of the matter, right to the heart and the meaning of the Christmas story. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God was in the beginning. He was in the beginning with God. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the word became flesh and lived among us. When I find myself asking, what, where is this Christmas spirit that I so long for when we come here and we prepare to celebrate the birth? What, where is the excitement? Where is the hope? I'm reminded when I hear these words that God revealed God's self to us, came to us in the midst of great chaos and challenge. And why? To show that we still have hope because God now dwells within us. God made a tabernacle, a dwelling place within us, within each one of us. As I sat with, with uh, Dawn Weaver this week and, and, and Daniel and, and the family and, and listening to their stories and talking with them I realized that what I was looking for was the God all around me in their stories in their lives, in their pain in their hurt but in their love and the hope that comes with Jesus and with the God living within us I came to realize as I had time to to stop by the shelter a few times this week to be able to, 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 to talk with folks and to sh hear their stories, both the, the volunteers and the staff and the folks who are uh, using the shelter for safe space, seeing the hope that, that comes in their story and hear it just being present, seeing the hope and the inspiration that I get out of seeing the folks who gave up their night to be there to make sure that there was a safe place for somebody to be. There is hope when we see the light that God has placed within us, that dwelling place that God has made within us. Jesus came to show a people who were hurting and finding themselves weighed down by what was going on around them. Jesus came to show them a new way, a life-giving way, a transformed life that can be lived. Jesus, this Christmas, comes to reveal to us that same type of transformation if we will allow that transformation, if we are open for that transformation. That same hope and promise is present here and right now. That hope and that promise that came with Jesus' birth some 2,000 years ago is present with us here today. That's the beautiful realization in John's Gospel. It shows us that the joy of Christmas isn't bound to a manger. It's not bound to, to a, a Christmas gift. It's not bound to, to the Magi traveling and bearing gifts. But it is ever-present living within us and living with us. That is the beauty of Christmas. That is the joy of Christmas, the hope of Christmas. That is the true meaning of Christmas, that Christmas that is alive within us each and every day. This Christmas may be a transformation that could take place in our lives. It is developing some new traditions, if we will. We know we like to follow traditions, uh, but, but maybe we should get some new ones sometimes. Sometimes we got a thing. I think we're going to preach about that this coming Sunday. So, something to do with the old wine skins and putting some new wine in them. Sometimes we got to do something new. We got to say, okay, this worked for a time, but it's time to look at something new, a new beginning, if you will. We have to stop and we have to think about it. I, I would invite us this year to develop some new traditions that can be incorporated into our daily lives. I have in my notes here to be in our daily lives or if, if we can't do it in our daily lives, to do it throughout the year. I'm going to scratch that part. Y'all getting the, the reader's notes right here in, in life. We're going to scratch We're going to incorporate it into our daily lives because this is important work that we develop new tradition as we start this new beginning and we realize Christmas every day that we do something different and that we work it into our daily lives, our daily routine. Maybe we can grow a little closer together with one another when we've 
take time and we, we, during this season, it seems like every year we all know the, the stories. We deal with death and, and families that are grieving. One of the things that I, I see in that and the things that I hope that we can come to, to uh, appreciate is this desire to love on one another while we are here. To love on, you know, somebody once said, don't, don't send me flowers when I'm dead, send them to me while I'm alive. Tell the folks that you love that you love them. Call them, text them. I said that a few weeks ago. We got more ways now to communicate with people than we ever have before. You ain't got to tie a note to a pigeon's leg no more. Well, you can if you could. I think we call that Twitter now. <laughs> we have a way to communicate with folks and let them know that we are here. Grow closer with one another. Find new ways to communicate with one another. Be reminded of just how precious life is. And here's the key. Start living. Start living. How many of us go through the motions, but we, we, we don't feel like we've yet started living? We just do what the, the mundane routine uh, that has been for the last 10, 15, 20, 40 years. We're going through the motions of life, but we are not living. Sometimes we are so focused on work, and we get so stressed out that we forget to actually live. Maybe this Christmas... The greatest present that can be given is one that we can give to ourselves and to others by actually starting to live, starting to live fully. Imagine what a world would be like if we were to start truly living, the love that could be shared if we were truly living, the joy that would be realized, and the transformations that could take place. Imagine what that would be like if Christmas came alive within us and inspired us to live. If we are truly living, what would this world be like? If all of us were to embrace this Christmas and start to truly live, live a life to the fullest, live a life realizing the God within us. John said the Word was made flesh in Jesus. And in the Word that was made flesh within you and I. How do we do this? How can we truly start living? This year I would challenge us to focus on new beginnings. We're going to start a, a launch a, a sermon series about that in a couple of weeks. New beginnings. What needs a fresh start in your life? What, what newness are you searching for? Are you yearning for? Have you been hungry for? What new beginning is awaiting you? What can we do differently this year if we are to start living and launch into a new beginning while actively living? What new beginning can mean for your life? Think about that as we ponder this Christmas. Maybe we need to start focusing on Christmas, not just as Jesus' birthday. I, I submitted this for us last year. Not just as Jesus' birthday, but maybe we look at it as our birthday, our rebirth. A time when we are brought into this renewal, into something new, being reborn and reminded to truly live each and every day. Living life to the fullest, living with purpose and with passion. Living, realizing the God within you. Realizing the light within you. Not we, we ourselves are not the light, but the light is shining within us, and we are the light bearers to the world. The Word was made flesh in Jesus, and the Word that was made flesh within you and I, yes, the life light has been born anew today in Christ. The light of the world. Let God's rebirth within us give us great hope, and embolden us to begin living and experiencing our new beginning. Start experiencing our new beginnings. I find hope, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of pain, grief, and suffering, I find hope because of the God living within me, but more importantly, because of the God that I see living within each one of you. The God that I see living in and through your testimony, 
through your action and through your life as you start actively living and being who God called and created you to be, the life light to the world around each and every one of us. This Christmas, let us embrace this new gift. Let us be that gift, living a life, living, truly living, not just going through the motions, starting with a new beginning. Amen. Gracious and loving God, as we come gathered in this space, in our sanctuaries around the world, wherever we may be, we ask God that this manger that lies before us remind us of the life that you have called us to live. Remind us of the light that you are to the world around us, the light that you have placed within us. Remind us of the humble beginnings of Jesus, born in a manger. Let us, as we gaze upon this manger, be reminded of the joy that comes with the birth of Jesus. Let us be reminded, God, of all that you have called and created us to be. Let us be reminded of our own birth, our rebirth, our spiritual renewing that comes with the Christ child. Hope in the midst of chaos. Hope in the midst of despair. Hope to get us through to the next day to remind us that our story does not end here. That you continue to guide and to be with us. In your precious and holy name. Amen. our Savior is born this night we thank you God for the blessing that you are to us and the light that you have brought into this world and the hope that we now have in Christ's holy name Amen Metropolitan Community Churches around the world who celebrate the offering open communion. And so on this Christmas, Christmas morning now, it's after midnight, this Christmas morning, we invite you to join us for Holy Communion. And so we invite you this time, for those of you gathered virtually, to take time to gather your communion elements as we distribute communion elements here in this sanctuary.
are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem, and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman, on that night long ago. So on the night in which he gave himself for, up for us, he took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim again the mystery of our faith that Christ has died, Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen, Christ is here, Christ, Christ will come, come again. For your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and around the world on this Christmas morning and on these gifts of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. ourselves to go back out from this place I say to us again officially happy Christmas it is Christmas morning Jesus has uh, been born anew today as we go from this place uh, rise as you are able as we sing together Jesus the light of the world reminding us to take that light with us everywhere we go you may be the only light that someone sees today be a bright and shining beacon of hope, reminding them of the love that comes with this Christmas morning. Amen. Amen. 